Hi, everyone. Welcome to Clean Machine Live. My name is Jeff Palmer. I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Machine Plant-Based Fitness Nutrition. This video is for informational and educational purposes only. It is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Today, we're going to be talking about the killer keto diet. <laughs> and I don't mean killer like a dude, that's killer. No, I mean killer like in killing people. So we're, we're actually going to look at the science. Let's get behind the hyperbole and let's dive right into the science and look at three key studies that are broad studies, looking at a larger population. So it's not just little tiny studies of one-offs of, uh, hey, you know, my, it, 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 I, my uncle got <laughs> tried keto and he lost some weight. Okay, yeah, or we, we have anecdotal reports, but let's look at these big studies, the big studies that really show us some evidence of what could happen, especially long-term on a ketogenic diet, well, also called a low-carb diet. So what is considered low carbohydrates? Well, that's gonna be different comp compared to each study, but let's take a look at the first study. Um, so the first study, I'm going to go ahead and put it up on the screen so you guys can follow along and you can always grab the links. You can stop the video you can grab the link and look up the studies yourself. But this one is called Low Carbohydrate Diets and All-Cause Mortality, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Observational Studies. Now, this is great because it's a meta-analysis. It's basically taking this particular meta-analysis took 17 different studies and uh, that included 272,000 people in it. So quite a good amount of studies. So it's not just one study. So you can't accuse me of cherry picking this study. <laughs> this is a meta-analysis is looking at 17 different studies and, and saying, what do we get from the data from all of these different studies over 275,000 people? Okay. So what they found was, boom, the risk of all-cause mortality among those with a high low-carbohydrate score. That means they ate very intensely into the low-carbohydrate. That means they followed the low-carbohydrate diet for a long period of time. This was significantly elevated. So the pool data was 1.31. That means a 31% increased risk of all-cause mortality. So what is all-cause mortality real quick? That means cause uh, all the different causes of causing death. It could be cardiovascular disease, hypertension, diabetes, uh, etc. So those on a low carbohydrate, the ones that had the highest score means they qualified best for being on a low carbohydrate diet actually had a significantly increased 31 percent increased risk of all cause mortality now 31 percent is pretty significant it's not five percent or eight percent 31 percent that's a good stuff now this study was in 2013 though and people say, hey, wait a minute, there's been a lot better research out on keto diets and stuff like that since then. You know, what does the newer research, uh, you know, say? And, and a lot of people have uh, attacked this study. Let me go ahead and take it off the screen. Attack this study by saying, well, they didn't separate out food quality. What is food quality? Well, when you're eating McDonald's hamburgers, you know, that's that's different from eating a hamburger that's made just with whole wheat and blah, blah, blah. So healthy versus junk food or standard American diets. So they said that's not fair because those on a low carbohydrate diets could be eating bacon and 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 salami and and, and bad foods. What about higher quality, low carb diets? So this was interesting. So we're going to skip forward from 2013 all the way to 2020. And let's take a look at this study. So this study, 2020 study, the association of low carb diets, and they're comparing it with low fat diets with mortality among the US adults. 
Okay, so this is really interesting because they're now just not looking at uh, the impact of low carb diets on all cause mortality, but they're also comparing it on what if you did low fat diets? Because those are the two really common ways of people trying to lose weight, either cut out the carbs or cut out the fat. And usually either one of those, I mean, most basically keeping the protein about the same in either of the diets, just reducing either the carbs or the fat. So which was better? and which one affected all-cause mortality. Okay, so let's dive into the study itself. So right there, it says, quote, directly from the study, overall, low-carb diets and low-fat diets were not associated with total mortality. What? <laughs> but a healthy low-carb diet and a healthy low-fat diet were both lower in total mortality. So quality of the diet did affect the outcomes. Now that's interesting, <laughs> but if you just read that, you might assume, hey, wait a minute. Well, that, that rests my case. That, that's my case that low-carb diets can, can lower uh, overall mortality if they're healthy. Okay. But let's look at what they defined a healthy low carb diet as. <laughs> so what did they consider in this study to be a healthy low carb diet? And this is directly from the study. A healthy low carb diet was one that was lower in low quality carbohydrates. That's good. That makes sense for every diet. And higher amounts of plant protein and unsaturated fat instead of animal saturated fat. Now that's huge because of course, if you are subbing out plant protein for animal protein, we all know from many of the other studies that you're gonna get more favorable outcomes. But it wasn't the low carb that was doing it, the fact that they were switching out animal proteins for plant proteins. <laughs> okay, so that's not very accurate then. And it's always interesting because somebody reading those top lines might misinterpret the, the actual meaning of the studies. It's not until you actually dig down in the studies and actually how they define those that you find out facts like the fact that, well, what they were doing is just subbing out the animal protein for plant protein. Well, of course you're gonna get better outcomes. Okay, so what if we had an actual study that looked at different quality, low carb healthy, low carb unhealthy, low fat healthy and low fat unhealthy and then compared all the aspects of which one actually increased or decreased mortality rates that would be cool well that actually did happen <laughs> and we're going to jump into this by saying this study so now we're going to come all the way up to 2023. Actually, this one just came out in May, I believe, or June. So it's just a brand spanking new study. So we have a current study and a study that is inclusive of healthy low fat and unhealthy low fat, healthy low carb and unhealthy low carb. So you get four different things we're comparing here. So we're taking out the uh, the confounding, what they call confounding factor of being healthy or non-healthy and doing it for both groups in low carb and low fat. And this is what they found. So the conclusions of the study were, quote, higher mortality, that's death, <laughs> was observed for overall low carb diets and unhealthy low carb diets but a slightly lower risk for a healthy low carb diet. So remember, healthy low carb diets can include more plants. Well, of course, the more plants you put in the diet, the better the outcomes are gonna come. But those on the overall uh, low carb diet, which was not really looking at how healthy it was, just saying, hey, whatever you eat, you eat, and those eating an unhealthy low carb diet like bacon and salami and butter, <laughs> um, but those when they included more whole plant foods diets, yes, but isn't that the low food, the, the plants that are actually causing the benefit, not the fact that it's low carb or not, because the low carb actually increased that. Okay, so let's dig down into the details. 
what were the actual results? So the overall low carb diet scores included a 12 to 18 higher risk of total cause and cause specific, total all cause mortality and cause specific mortality. A healthy low fat diet was associated with significantly lower mortality by 18% and cardiovascular mortality by 16% and cancer mortality by 18%. So you look at total mortality, cardiovascular mortality and cancer mortality and the low fat, healthy low fat diet was associated with lower uh, in each one of those risks. Okay, so what does this tell us at a, as a whole? Well, this tells us that the difference between low carb diets and high fat diets or, uh, <laughs> sorry, a low carb versus a low fat diet, no food, uh, plant based diet, a 30 to 36 mortality percent mortality difference between a low carb diet and a low fat diet, even considering food quality. That means when you actually accounted for the quality of the food intake, you're still getting a 30 to 36 percent. Uh, increased risk of overall mortality. That is the difference between uh, increased risk for um, low carb diets and decreased risk for things. There's a 30 to 36% gap. That's a one third greater chance of dying. Wow, just by reducing your carbs instead of reducing your total fat intake. Now we know total fat intake uh, will dominantly include, if you're eliminating fats from your diet, is mostly the animal fats, which are can usually tied to the animal proteins. So when you're consuming animal proteins, you're also consuming generally animal fats, unless they're isolated or, or processed in a way to remove the fats. But generally when you're eating uh, those things, you're eating animal saturated fats, which we know increases the risk for hypertension. Uh, study after study after study has shown this. So what we're saying is basically a low-fat plant-based, whole food plant-based diet is going to give you much better outcomes and much greater risk of mortality than a low-carb meat-centered diet would. The science is there. There's three different studies that all show eating more plants is going to improve your chances for reducing your risks for all cause mortality. There are so many different and better ways of dropping body fat than cutting out carbs because your carbohydrates are bound to fibers, usually are bound to polyphenols, uh, your poly, your all your phytonutrients, many of your antioxidants come with carbohydrate rich foods like fruits and beans and grains and um, all of the ones that are high. Now, we're talking whole food carbs here. We're not talking isolated sugars uh, because once you isolate sugars or fats, they become much more uh, negatively impactful to the human health. We're talking in their whole food state. Complex carbohydrates and even simple carbohydrates in foods that have the polyphenols and fiber and phytonutrients intact that improve our microbiome and increase our body's ability to mobilize, utilize, and properly store when necessary those extra carbohydrates. That's the proper way to do it, but you need all of those other cofactors. Once you remove the carbohydrate, that's all it is. It's a carbohydrate all by itself. It doesn't have all of its assistance there. The polyphenols to help uh, accelerate metabolism to get those used. The fiber to slow those carbohydrates into the digestive system so the body can handle them a little bit at a time. The other phytonutrients, the antioxidants to protect from oxidation. The uh, other uh, phytonutrients that the body can use and vitamins and minerals that are in the carbohydrate rich foods these all play a cofactor in helping the body utilize these carbs. So once we see a healthy, which means more whole foods and less processed foods, yes, we should all be reducing our processed foods, but low carb is really not the way to do it. Now, there's many other studies that show potential brain shrinkage, 
catabolism or muscle loss from a low carb diet, especially long term. This is really not the way to go if it's increasing a 36%, up to 36% increased risk of dying when you're choosing a low carb diet versus a low fat diet. And a low fat diet is, most plants are generally low fat. There are some exceptions, coconuts, avocados, olives that are higher in fat, nuts and seeds. Yeah, but generally they're higher in better fat, monounsaturated fats, MUFAs as they're called, fatty acids. <laughs> so check out my video on MUFAs, monounsaturated fatty acids, and see how beneficial they are for you. And it's interesting, MUFAs from plants were shown to be beneficial, decreasing the risk of oxidized cholesterol, which can cause heart attacks, stroke, uh, Alzheimer's disease is related to oxidized cholesterol, hypertension, high blood pressure, all of these things. And MUFAs actually decrease the risk if they're from plants. Check out my video because I show you the studies that show that these monounsaturated fat, fats from animals do not decrease, do not have the benefits that plant MUFAs have. Now, this was pretty fascinating because they thought, oh, MUFAs are MUFAs, right? PUFAs are PUFAs, right? Polyunsaturated fatty acids, which are commonly known as your mega 369s, these are different. Monounsaturated fatty acids found in olives and, and, and uh, avocados and stuff, rich in other benefits, health benefits that most people aren't aware of, but they must come from plants according to the research. So there you have it. You can do a healthful, uh, low fat diet keeping those saturated fats to a minimum, gain uh, muscle while losing that body fat and do it in a healthy way that can actually prolong life or extend life rather than decreasing life that we've seen in multiple now human studies uh, looking at long-term uh, low carbohydrate diets like the keto diet that is just really increasing our risk for dying from all causes. I hope you like this. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Let's get it shared so we can uh, get more people seeing this. My heart of hearts wants everybody out there to uh, understand the difference between these things and get this scientific knowledge so that we can share it with family members so they don't have to suffer like so many other people have suffered from these diseases. It doesn't have to happen. All it takes is a little uh, understanding of nutrition. Once you understand the nutrition, you'll understand how to make better choices for yourself, for your family. And that's what I want for you. Lots of health, happiness, and a life full of enjoyment all the way to the end. Thanks for joining me. We'll be back again with more interesting information next week. See you then.